is Jana with Pearl Together, and this is part one of our step-by-step -step knit along, where I'm going to show you how to knit a sock from the cuff down using the heel flap and gusset, and we're going to go super slow step-by-step, -step, where I explain why I do what I do and why I prefer to do it that way. Okay, so I went stash diving, and I found uh, several skeins of Plymouth Happy Feet. Now this has been, I think this has been discontinued but it is merino wool with some nylon content. So sock yarn, when I say that, some people don't know what I mean by that. It's fingering weight yarn that usually contains a blend of wool and nylon. So those percentages can vary. Sometimes it's 75% wool, 25% nylon, sometimes it's 80, 20. But it's good to have some nylon content in there, particularly for durability and wear and socks. Now the other key to having longer wearing socks is to knit a tight enough gauge where you're knitting a fabric that's not too loose and causing friction. So if you knit a fabric that is pretty loose or use needles that are too big, your each knit stitch, each loop is going to be bigger than it should be and it might go like this on its neighboring stitch. So it's better to have a tighter woven fabric, a tighter knitted fabric, so that it wears longer. So to in order to determine that you guessed it, we need to make a swatch. Now a lot of people cringe when I say that and they don't want to make a swatch, but you need to because if you're going to spend all the hours it takes to make hand knitted socks that fit you pro properly and will become your favorite socks, you need to do it properly. And that means pairing the yarn with the correct needle so that you have the resulting fabric that's going to be worth your time, right? So the way I did my swatch was to knit a little tube. And the reason you want to swatch in the round when we're talking about socks is most people have a different gauge when knitting back and forth or knitting in the round. Because when you purl, your gauge is slightly different than when you knit. Now you there, of course there are exceptions to that, but it's worthwhile to check. So all I did was cast on magic loop. I cast on 40 stitches. I divided in half, so I have 20 on each side. And I just knit a little swatch while I was watching a movie last night. No big deal. But I knitted a couple inches, I don't know, maybe that's an inch and a half, but I'm going to measure on both sides of my tube because you need to get an accurate accounting of how many stitches per inch. With this Plymouth Happy Feet and size 2.25 millimeter needles or US size one, I get between nine and 10 stitches per inch. It's right at nine and a half stitches per inch. So was it worth my time to do that? Absolutely. Now, if you get a gauge that you feel like is too tight and stiff, or you get a gauge that you feel like is too loose, then what I would have done is just knitted a purl round so I can tell that that's where that gauge was, switch needles, knit onto a different size needle, depending on whether I want a firmer or looser fabric, and continue on for another inch or so, and then measure that. And the reason you do that is then you have that knowledge, well, this is the fabric I got with this particular fingering yarn, and these needle, this combination. If I needed to go up a needle size, I would have knitted my purl around to kind of make a line so I know, and then I would have gone to 2.5 millimeter, knitted an inch, measured, and, and then I could tell. And then I decide what I like. Okay, so I know that I'm gonna work off of nine stitches per inch. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is measure my foot. So get out your little handy tape measure measure around the ball of your foot, measure around the ankle, and then you need to s decide whether you like any negative ease. Now what we mean by negative ease is, do you want your yarn to have to stretch a little bit to go over your foot? Do you like it to fit snugly and tight or do you not like that? I don't particularly care for a whole lot of negative ease, but some people prefer that. So that might be a little trial and error for you. Um, so when I measured the ball of my foot, I get eight inches. So times nine stitches per inch, that's going to be 72 stitches that I want to start out with. I know that I have about nine and a half stitches here. So I already have about 5% negative ease built in, and I'm going to go with that too. You do what works for you. Some of this is trial and error until you get a little bit more experience and you learn what works. If you want to calculate about five percent negative ease and you had a similar measurement to me you would get say let's say you have eight stitches per inch and an eight inch measurement around the ball of your foot then you're going to have eight times eight is 64 
but maybe you want to cast on 60 and have that 5 to 10 percent negative ease. We'll see. It also depends on if you want to have a ribbing that needs to be a multiple of four. Okay, so 60 is a multiple of four. You'll have 15 sets of ribbing if you do that. So those are some things to consider. Be sure if you have questions, type in the Facebook group, tag me in the Ravelry group. I'm happy to help you sort out your numbers. Now, if you've never knitted a sock before, ribbing is your friend. It's very forgiving, right? Going over the arch of your foot, it will be very stretchy and forgiving. So if you haven't knitted a sock before or you're knitting a sock for the first time for someone else and you're unsure whether they have a high instep or high arch, ribbing is a good way to go. Now there's lots of variations of ribbing and we'll get into that when we choose a pattern. So the first thing we're going to do today, knit your swatch, knit yourself a little tube. I would cast on 40 to 60 and knit, knit that and then measure. Now you're going to say, well, that's a waste of my time. I could just, if I'm doing toe up socks, I could just knit the toe. You know what? You're right. You could, but if it isn't to your liking and you can't get it over your ankle, you're going to be taking it out just like I am. <laughs> Trust me, it's worth your time to swatch. If you don't care and you want to just start knitting this, knitting the sock, I'll put a link down below with a time step where you can jump ahead to the cast on. If you figure, well, I'm just knitting the sock for practice, I'll find somebody that it fits. I have lots of kids or I have grandchildren, I'll find somebody that it fits and you want to give it away, that's fine. Jump to that point in the video down below. That's okay. I'm swatching. Okay. Let's go to the cast on. I'm going to show you, you can absolutely use the long tail cast on. I'm going to show you a cable cast on because I think it's a little more stretchy. Lots of times when people have trouble getting on a sock, it's because the cast on is too tight. So we're going to go with a cable cast on and I'll show you how to do that. Before we get started, I just want to give a great big thank you to my newest patron, Kelly Combs. Thanks for hopping on over to patreon.com and becoming a patron to help support the channel and bring you these videos each and every week. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a cable cast on and we're going to make this a stretchy cable cast on. So I'm going to make a slip knot to begin where I just take the yarn the tails in my left hand and I just flip that over and then bring the yarn around the bottom and up through the loop I just made. So most people know how to make a slip knot, but if you don't, there was a quick version. I'm going to put my needle on there with the tail going to the left and my working yarn to the right. All right, then the first thing I'm going to do is just go into that slip knot and I'm going to just knit. I'm just going to knit one stitch like normal because I need two stitches on here. I'm going to knit one like normal and just put it up on the left hand needle. I'm actually putting the right hand needle in between those two stitches before I tighten that down. Now that's going to be a spacer for me. That's going to ensure that this cast on is not too tight. Then you're going to go ahead and wrap that needle as if you're knitting and pull that through the space and then bring that up and put it on the left hand needle again. And again, don't tighten that down. Go ahead and leave that loose. Put your needle between those two stitches, the one that you just made and the one that was on there before, before you tighten down this part. That ensures that your cast on won't be too tight. Now, the other thing you can do, if you are a very tight knitter or you're just learning and you would like to ensure that you have a stretchy enough cast on, if you tend to wrap your yarn too tight, you can get a size larger needle and use that as your spacer and your wrapper. Because when you wrap here, we're not actually tightening anything down. We're not making a stitch. In fact, we're pulling that loop pretty big and putting it on the left-hand side. So you're not, actually, you're not actually using this right-hand needle to measure anything except for your spacing between the stitches. So we don't have any stitches that will end up residing on that right-hand needle. So if you want to get a larger size, you certainly could do that here. So we're just going to carry on, put that up on the left, and you're going to cast on as many as you need. So in my case, I'm going to cast on 72. I would suggest a multiple of four, whether that's 60, 64, 68, 72, whatever works for you based on your swatching numbers. And then I'll show you, using Magic Loop, I'll show you how I'm going to join in the round. Okay, I decided to cast on 72, and the reason I did that is because I haven't quite decided what stitch pattern I want yet, and 72 is divisible by more things than 80. Um, for example, 72 is divisible by 4, 6, 8, or 12. 
So that allows me more versatility for things I can show you. So I'm just going to find my halfway point, which would be 36. And I'm going to, uh, I just move, slid all the stitches to about the middle of my cable and I'll find the halfway point here. Okay. So my halfway point is 36. And I'm just going to gently slide apart stitches 36 and 37, bend my cable, not so much that I'm permanently bending the wire, but just so enough that I can slip that loop through and slide everything down. Now I want my cable edge, by the way, see how nice that looks, that twisty cable edge. I want those cable edges to be facing one another. So I need to untwist, I'll make sure none of the twist stitches are twisted and that the bottom edge are meeting up and facing one, one another, okay? Like that. Then the way that I like to join in the round is pretty straightforward and not very complicated. I take the tail in and just lay it over. I'm going to take my the needle that's furthest away from me on the stitches that I just finished putting on. I'm going to take that all the way down. Here's my working yarn. I'm going to take the tail and lay it over the top like that. Then I'm going to take my magic loop. Now if you're using double points, if you're using three, just divide your stitches in third and you'll do this part the same way. If you're using four double points, just divide them in quarters evenly. If you're using two circulars, then you'd have one circular across here and one across, you know, half the number of stitches on each. Now, this last cable, cable stitch that we put on is going to be kind of slanty. It's going to be at 45 degrees, so you'll need to pull that away so that you can see what's what. And I go into that as if to purl. And I'm just, I'm not really making a stitch. I'm just using it, using my needle to draw through the tail. And then I'm just going to pull that all the way through. And I just do that as my way of connecting and joining in the round. And I'm just going to tie a square knot. Honestly, I know that's not the most uh, refined way of doing this, um, but these are socks and I want them to be sturdy and functional. So a lot of people will cast on an extra maybe here and then knit the first two together and you can do that too. Um, for me, it never holds very tight. So I've always just done it this way and it works for me. So do what works for you. As always, you're the boss of your knitting. All right, I've, after you've joined in the round, whatever method works best for you, I'm just gonna go into this first stitch. I'm gonna make sure and hold the tail back away, and I'm gonna just start knitting a two by two ribbing. So knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, all the way around. And I'm gonna do that for an inch, inch and a half, until I get a cuff that looks pretty substantial and the way that I want it to look. Whenever I do this, I always like my rows to be even. I like to be, I like for there to be 12 rows of uh, ribbing, two by two ribbing or 16. I just happen to like multiples of four. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. And that will finish up today's video. Then for Monday, we'll go talk about stitch patterns and what we want to have the leg of our sock look like. So from now until Monday, when the next video comes out, I want you to just knit your two by two cuff. Okay, sock knitters, continue knitting your two by two ribbing. There's mine, I have a, a pretty good start. Oh, maybe I have about a third of an inch. So I'm gonna do mine for about an inch, inch and a half, depending on what looks good. So continue knitting your ribbing until it looks good to you. And then on Monday, I'll upload a video that shows you how I'm gonna go about choosing whatever stitch pattern that I decide to do for the leg. And I'll help you with some tips. Or if you don't wanna go and do that, you can knit what I knit or I'll put some choices for patterns down below in Monday's video description. Okay, check out the description down below if you want to become a patron, join us on the Facebook or Ravelry group, or you wanna cut and paste the text of what I showed you today. All right, thanks for watching.